Hello, welcome to Crafts for Kids. I'm Jan. Spring is tiptoeing in. I can see those little green leaves poking up through the dirt, and it's just a super delight. There are a lot of spring holidays now, and one of them is Easter. And the craft tradition for Easter is to decorate eggs. Now you can dye them, that's very traditional, paint them, put stickers on them, or I'll show you how to decoupage an egg. Decoupage is a French word that basically translates to cutting out something, usually paper, but it can be other things. Today it will be paper, and it will be part of a paper napkin. They, they, they're tissue thin, and so they're perfect for it. Now, before I get started here, I want to make cups to hold the eggs while we're working. And this is a toilet paper tube, which looks very familiar. Save all yours, because we're going to do a lot of crafts with them. So today, to make the cups for the eggs, the cup holders, I'm going to cut it in half. It doesn't have to be exactly in half. And then cut each section in half, again, with a large pair of scissors. And this will make something sturdy to hold the eggs. Very, very useful. You see, I have them on these eggs right now. So I will put these, use these to hold the eggs. It just works perfectly. And what we need, what else we need, is white glue with a little bit of water added because we want it to be a creamy texture. White glue as it is, it's just a little bit too thick. And a little brush. And I would not use a really good brush for this. One time I forgot to clean it and you know what happened. It just was board stiff. We also need a napkin, a paper napkin. I chose one with a white background because I'm going to be working on a white egg. Now you can dye these before we decoupage. Uh, if you wish, so that's an option. Now, because the napkin is two or three ply, I want to separate it. This one is two ply, so I'm going to separate it like this. And this is handy just to keep this to wipe off the brush, if you want. And now I've got one ply to work with. It's nice and thin and very flexible. Now this is a multicolored napkin, as most are. So you can see that I've taken all the yellow flowers on one egg, all the pink flowers on another egg, all the red flowers on another egg to add some variety to the eggs. So the next egg I'm going to work on, let's see, what color will it be? Well, I think I'll do multicolored this time. So I'll use a smaller pair of scissors. I find that helpful. So I think I'll start with pink. What I do is cut the napkin. Just try and cut out the pink flower. And I'm trying not to, I'm trying to cut around the flower. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And then the next nice thing to do is to cut off the corners, kind of round them. Because this helps this flat piece curve around. We are we're taking a flat piece of paper and gluing it to a curved surface. So this helps. So I just have one more little, there we go. So there it is. Now I'm going to dip my brush in the glue. Just take a little excess. And I think I'll just put a little bit of glue on the egg to hold it. Now I can lift up the decoupage with a brush, which is tons of fun anyway. <laughs> and then just start I like to go in four different directions just to get it started. Because the idea, there will be wrinkles, because as I said, it's a flat piece of paper on a curved surface. 
and just keep going around to get everything glued down. It's very satisfying to do this. I don't know that I would decoupage a chair, but I have decoupaged a small basket. And believe it or not, that went just fine. Could be an Easter basket too. And I see one little piece that I haven't quite glued down yet. And be sure to use a nice amount of glue. You don't want it to run, so you don't want that much. But just kind of go over it so you feel like it's all the way covered. Now that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to put it in the A cup like this. Now I have to let it dry. And that might take 15 minutes, an hour, depending on what the how warm the room is. Now this one, I've already put the first piece on and I've let it dry. So now I can add a second piece to it. And I'm doing orange here. So I'm going to cut out another orange flower. And I think I have one cut out right here. So let's do that. And again, I'm going to just decide where I want to put it. You can hold it now. I think that's pretty good. So I'll put a bit of glue. You don't have to do this. But I like to do it because it just sticks you know, pretty easily. And it's okay if the flowers overlap a little bit. You can see it is. And the, you'll just need three or four of these to do an egg. And you can do all sorts of uh, motifs. There are so many napkins to choose from. You can choose the design you like, the colors you like. But all in all, it makes a really pretty Easter egg. So I'm sort of half done. So I'm going to put this in the egg holder. And just let that dry. And then I'll finish it. And that is how you decoupage eggs. Now since we used eggs, and eggs come in an egg carton, we can make a tiny little Easter basket with one end of the egg carton. So an adult should cut this apart. You will see that one side doesn't have an edge, but we have a little tip on what to do with that. So you can get two Easter baskets out of one, one paper carton. And save the middle section, because we can do something else with that on another day. So the next thing I do is paint this. The next step is to paint this. You can use poster paint or acrylic. Something like that would work really well. So I have one that's already done. The next step is to punch holes right here, because this is where the handle is going to go. I'm going to turn this around, and I think a pipe cleaner, also known as a chenille stem, works really well. So I'm going to poke it in these holes. And then because it's going to come out, unless I secure it, I leave a little bit extra right here. And I'm going to lift this up and wrap it around a little bit. And that should hold it. I'll do this for the other side too. Maybe a little bit more than an inch. So you can actually wrap it around like that. And there you have a handle. Now, it's pretty. Here is the Easter egg cart, all decorated. And I've put Jumbo wick rack around the edge. That's a fun thing to do. You can glue a piece of ribbon or even a piece of paper, like a strip of paper all the way around, because we want to cover up the back a little bit. And then you can fill this with eggs, a little chick. These little chicks, these are so cute, so funny. So you can put a little chick in there and you can add an Easter egg two Easter eggs even, and a little bow at the top, another little Easter egg, and there you have a little Easter basket out of the egg carton. So I hope you have wonderful spring holidays and a lovely Easter. I hope the Easter Bunny comes. Bye-bye.
Thank you for watching. Hello, welcome to Crafts for Kids. I'm Jan. Cinco de Mayo has become a very popular holiday in the U.S. Originally, it was a Mexican war victory from the 1800s. And look at it today. It's just, you know, we the colors are great. The food is heavenly. I love tacos so much. So it's just a fun thing to celebrate now in the U.S. I hear that it's bigger here than it is in Mexico, but viva. Um, a fun project for Cinco de Mayo could be a piñata. It just spells fun to me. A piñata is usually a container of some sort. It can be paper mache, it can be a tissue box, or even a cereal box. I'm just using a paper bag today, a lunch bag, so we can even use that. And it's decorated with either crepe paper or tissue paper cut in strips and fringed and glued on. Super fun. And if you don't know the tradition of piñata, the bag or the, whatever the container is, is filled with some sort of small treasure like candy, little toys or erasers or something like that. But I think the preference is candy. And that's what we're using today. So I'll show you how to do this. So today we need, as I said, a bag. That'll be the vehicle for the candy. We need crepe paper or tissue paper. I happen to have crepe paper on hand, so that's what I'm using. And we need some sort of glue or glue stick. You can use both. I'm going to be using a stapler at the very end. We need a little piece of cord or something to hang the piñata with. <laughs> Wild cord there. And maybe a few other things, but that's basically it. Scissors. Now, the first thing we'll do, we'll get started. These are one-inch streamers. And streamers really add a lot of movement to it when someone hits the bag. So we'll start with that. So these are just one inch. They can be any length you like. And also, the crepe paper that comes in rolls that are about two inches, that also works really well. And you can do a mixture. So I do want to glue this quite well because someone's going to be hitting it. Now they can take turns, and once the bag is open and all the goodies fall out, everyone scrambles, you know, to get a piece of whatever it is. Now I'm going to attach these one by one, and you can overlap them. I like to mix the colors. It's just, you know, it's actually um, just a lot, very enjoyable to do this. I guess it part of it's the colors and the materials. And there, I have about five. Doesn't matter what order you put them in. Just a mix is fine. And the next thing I do, I need to make two-inch strips. So I have a two-inch wide ruler. Doesn't everybody? And I just use it to mark two inches across if you're using this kind of crepe paper. If it's a roll, it's already cut for you. And then just cut it, I just cut it straight across. And this is very handy to make the strips. And then you can either cut out a section of it or cut all of it at once to make fringe. And I just think I'll take a section. And I'm going to fold it. And that way it makes the fringing go pretty quickly. And then I'll cut the edges just about three quarters of the way up. And then just cut little snips. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'd say they're about a quarter inch in width, about an inch long. And prepare all your colors. And then you're ready to glue and then open it. And I think I'll just do the front of this right now to give you the idea. Lots of glue because you want to make sure it really stays on. So I'm very generous with glue. 
and then I add one strip. And already it starts to look like a pinata. Now, once I do the whole front, I'm going to stick a box in here, or even an egg carton sometimes works, so that you can start doing the sides. But this just gives you the idea. Now I think I'll do blue. And I want it to overlap. So we're going to do the whole front. Oh, I'll show you. We would just continue doing this. And you can do the colors in any order you like. You can do a rainbow effect, or you can just do a multicolor effect, which I think was what I'm doing just with abandon. More glue. And the glue the strip is about one inch, the edge of the strip is about one inch away from the glue, just to give you the rough idea. Not that it matters, you can do it any way you like. If you want, you can even cut a strip right in the middle and start a different color. So that gives you the idea. And then we would do the whole bag and let it dry. Okay, the next step is to see it's all done. As I thought this could have another decoration on it. And so what I did is I made a, a I drew a cactus and just glued some flat crepe paper to it and cut it out. And I have glue dots on the back. And I'm going to add that to the front. Let's see what we think about that. You could also use hot glue. But I think that's kind of fun. So you could do anything you like. The next step is to fill it with candy. This is another fun part. And you want candy that's wrapped because it's probably going to hit the ground. So make sure it has, you know, some sort of wrapper on the outside. And then we'll fill it with candy. This is just one bag, and there's a lot to it. And I love the colors. I'm going to see if I can get rid of this. Because we want to put enough in for everybody. There, that's just one bag. Okay, now I fill the top over once and one more time. And I did cover it with gray paper. So what I'm going to do is, because we want to hang this, I'm going to put this thin rope to make a hanger. I'll just put it there and tie it. And then I'm going to either hot glue this, I'm going to buy this slat, make this slat. I'm going to staple it. You could also hot glue it if you'd like. I think I'll just staple this. You want to make it nice and secure because you want the bag to rip before the top rips. And there you have a pinata. If you want, you can glue some pom poms on. You know, for flowers, you can add pom poms here. But there's a pinata for you. So happy Cinco de Mayo. I hope you have a wonderful party. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Hello. Welcome to Crafts for Kids. I'm Jan. To celebrate Mother's Day, I thought we could make some beautiful flowers for her. Now, they could be pastel. She might like pastels. Or they could be very bright and cheery. She might like that. Or they could be darker and more exotic. So, your choice. We can do all kinds of things. These flowers are made with plain old coffee filters, unused, of course. They can be round, and that comes in different sizes. Or if you happen to have these on hand, you can use those, and I'll show you how to do that. And if you want to make them as soon as possible, 
and you don't have coffee filters on hand, you can use a paper towel. What I recommend is tracing around a saucer or a small bowl or something, and then working with it like we will with these. So I can show you that. So what you need besides coffee filters, you need something to color it with. Now it can be food dye that you dilute. Like I'd start with a teaspoon of water and a few drops of food color in a container, like a non-food safe uh, container, something you can reuse. This is part of an A carton. I also brought this. I like to use that, um, where they can be little ramekins that you don't use for food. Also, we need pipe cleaners for the stem, any colors. Kind of fun to mix it up. Doesn't have to be green. I like to drop the color on the, these coffee filters with a little eyedropper. And I bought a bunch of these very inexpensively. And you can reuse them. But you can also use a plastic spoon if you want. You know, something like that. Something that never comes in contact with food. Just to be safe. You also need a tray of some sort. It can be plastic. Or you could put plastic wrap over this if you're going to use this later for food. We just want to be really, really safe. Now, we can cut petals. This is an idea of a coffee filter that's been cut with petals. Or we can use it just as is. This is really easy with the round ones. So you don't need a pair of scissors for that. This is a flower that I made with just round coffee filters. That's very pretty. So you don't have to cut the petals. So it's just another option, depending on what you'd like to do. You can also, with hot glue, glue a pom-pom to the end. This is going to be the very center of the flower. You can also put a bead on or just fold the tip. Now, I think I will cut this with some petals to show you how I do it. So just move these to the side for a second. The first thing I do is fold it in half. And then fold it in half again with a nice sharp crease. Now I'm going to cut this in points. You can cut it round, you can cut it in points. So it looks like that. And then I'll open it up. And because this is very flat and we want to make a round flower, I bring it down a bit, about halfway down. And that will let this have some movement. And see how the petals separate. And this flower right here, stuck to the other flower, is made that way. So it looks a little bit like a water lily. It's very exotic. Now that could be round also. Now I will take a round filter. And again, folding is the secret to doing this and doing a nice sharp edge. Then I'll fold this in half again, press the edge, and then again. And then I have a shape like this. And I'm going to cut something a very fat round petal. So I'm going to cut around like that. So when I open it, it looks like this. And that's a very pretty shape to work with. Now, if I want to make something like this, I just fold it one more time. So I've already folded it in half and then in half again. And then one more time, and then increase it one more fold. Nice sharp edges, really crease that fold. It'll help you cut a nice petal. And again, I could cut this straight across like I did in the first one, or I'm going to cut a nice little round petal. Let's see what like this looks like. It's a little heart shape right now. Keep opening this. And 
and you can see that the the difference so you can make all your flowers a little bit different or all the same but you have options so you can imagine the different kinds of petals you can do now i'm going to use these right here each flower uses three or four petals you can also do one if you want to make sort of a bud so I'm going to line these up, right, two of them up. And then I'll show you how I tint them. You want them to be as flat as possible. Because that will let the dye sort of spread nice, you know, evenly. And I think I will put, mm, I think I'll put some pink in the middle. You can do two at a time. You don't have to, though. And I just drip it on. And this will kind of flatten it, hopefully. And I do want these to go together, so I'm going to drip some paint here. Now, you don't want, you don't need to use too much, just a little bit at a time, because that way it'll let you put it in the areas you want. And I think I want this to be a little bit bigger. You might have to help it stay flat at first. That's looking pretty good. Now, what color should I add? I think I'll do green or whatever. Yes, green. I think I'll do green. And you can make the petals different colors, which I think I'm going to do. It's not that I want it to run that much. Okay, so I'm going to do some over here too. Whoops, and it did run. Because it's still going to look really pretty when it's all put together. It's very hard to go wrong. In fact, you don't. And if for some reason it turns out not the way you like, after it's dry, you can always put another layer on and see what happens. So that's pretty wild. I think I'll try this color right here. Oh, this is a light green. You know, they're so dark. You don't really know till you put it on what you've done. That's kind of the beauty of it. It's a little bit like tie-dye. You know, when you add all those colors and you have no idea till you open it. Yeah, I'm liking this. And it's fun when it starts mixing with the other colors. So you might help it along a little bit. But as I said, there's no right or wrong here. But I think it's really beautiful when the colors sort of mix together. Sort of unexpected. Now I'll try this one on the end, which I think is dark turquoise. Ooh, it's very dark. Now even if you work with liquid you know, the liquid watercolors, you can still dilute them. That's why I need the pastels. So, and if you're just starting out, you can get yellow, red, and blue, and you can mix some nice colors with that. And also, you can do one color and just add some water to make a lighter version of it, and it'll be very pretty. Now, I really don't want white. So I think I'll add some more until this gets totally covered. Although a little white might be interesting. Now, after I do this, I have to let it dry. And I think I'll take a tiny bit of pink and put it up here just be free this is a chance just to experiment you might like it you might not and that's that's art now at this point because it's really wet i have to let this dry and it might take about an hour so i'm going to just set this aside 
Now here's some that have dried. So I'll show you how to put these together. You don't have to use glue, but you can. So it's your option. Now I think I will just take a pipe cleaner. Remember, I could have a little pom-pom glue to it. I'm just going to roll this over. Because the idea is we want it to stay in the center of the flower. So something like that. Now I'm going to take, I usually decide which one I want to be very last, because that's the one that shows the most. So I think I'll start with this one. What I do is I poke a hole with the pipe cleaner. Just thread this through. You don't have to make a hole because this way it sticks a little better. Now if you want, you could glue, put a few dots of glue there. But I never have. But it's just, just another option. And then you really squish this. Kind of seems counterintuitive, but that's what kind of holds it together. And you do each layer separately. Give it a really good squish. Kind of fun to squish it. And then take the pipe cleaner and poke a hole. Just gently poke it. Just thread this through. Very satisfying. Again, bring this up and give it a squish. And the reason you don't do two at once is because then it sort of sticks together. And this way you want to see it starting to look like different petals. Give it a good squish and then we'll open it up later. That's what it looks like so far. You might be happy with it just like that. So you do have a lot of options. Hook this through. Plain old pipe cleaner, also known as a chenille stem. Again, it's to bring this up and give it a good squish, especially at the base, because that's what holds it together like a flower. So there's three layers. Now I'm going to do four. I've never done more than four. Maybe you can. Now, and I like to color these after they're cut, with the exception of this one. And that one I cut after it's dry, because it's um, easier to cut that way. Here it is. This is what it looks like. Pretend that it's folded in quarters, and then fringe it. Then you open it up, and it looks like this. And then you use the same technique like I'm doing here, and it ends up like this. Okay, now I'm really pressing it at the bottom. And then I hold the bottom like this. And start to open it up a little bit. See, it's a very pretty flower. And if you want, you can add a leaf. You can do some leaves, like I have here. And you thread it on the same way as you do this. So here are some wild flowers for you. You can make them, as I said, they make wonderful gifts. Or thank you for a teacher. You know, or brighten your own home or classroom with a bouquet. Now that pipe cleaners don't have to be that long, you can cut them whatever length you like. So pastel, or very bright, or dramatic. Here are some ideas for Mother's Day and gifts. So thank you for watching. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Happy birthday to everybody. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome to Crafts for Kids. I'm Jan. Today's quick craft uses toilet paper tubes, TP tubes as we also call them. Be sure to save yours because there's so many things we can make with them. Now in honor of spring, today we can make flowers. Now they can have a round shape, they can have six petals, they can be a tulip, or they can have four petals with a little indentation like a dogwood. And I'll show you how to do it. The first thing we do is press it flat. And we do that to help us draw on it. We want to draw first, at least I do. And then it helps us cut it out. So I think that I'll make a tulip. 
And it's very important when you draw your design that it still connects at the sides, at the top and the bottom. Because I tried this one, not connecting, and it tends to fall over. So it's important. It's just a little tip. So now to draw a tulip. Well, I think it's going to be round. And I think I'll just curve this a bit. That'll make a stem. And the base is really nice. It's really helpful to have a nice big solid base. So you can either make grass or leaves that are connected to the base. So that's what I mean. There's a lot of base here. Okay, now I'm going to cut this. I use a big pair of scissors because it's quite a lot to cut here. I've got a lot of thicknesses. But it's not as difficult as you would imagine. So big scissors are very helpful here. And if you want, perhaps an adult could cut this for you if it's proving to be a little bit challenging. So that's how you cut it. This one's already cut. So let's work with that one. And now you can use poster paint, acrylics, paint sticks, maybe even markers. But I think I'll use these paint sticks. I really like these. And I'll just start painting. It's, um, I think it's a little bit easier actually with a brush and some paint. I'm doing kind of a messy job here. But you get the idea. Yeah, I think I do prefer paint. Anyway, these are nice because they're not very messy. Now I'll do the stem. And then I'll do the leaves. Yes, I definitely vote for a brush and some paint. But there's the idea. So let's see if it stands. You wouldn't have to poke it out a bit. But there you go. So I hope you make a garden of flowers with all your TP tubes. They're very, very handy. Thank you for watching. That was our quick craft that we like to close the episode with. So bye-bye. Happy spring.